Hi guys, it's Isis. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for everyone who is subscribed to the channel, who is liking and sharing the videos. Thank you guys so much. This video is going to discuss whether there is or is not, in fact, a neo-pagan community. I'm going to talk about living close to Salem and my own experiences about living very close to Salem because there's a huge neo-pagan community and population here. There are a lot of wonderful things about living in this area. The history here is amazing. It's so close to Boston, which is a big city, so we can get in the car and go to Boston whenever we want. We're 30 minutes away from comedy clubs and theater and um, traveling Broadway shows that are right there in Boston. Uh, there's a lot of history in Boston. There's a lot of history in Salem. There's wonderful architecture. The restaurants in this city are absolutely amazing. If you come here to see the architecture, if you go to Chestnut Street, there's these beautiful large old houses that you can go and tour. Another thing that I love about living in this in the Salem, Massachusetts area is I can walk around with my pentagram out and nobody bothers me. No one bothers you for being a neo-pagan in this area. You don't get dirty looks from people. That has happened in every other place where I have lived. So this is like the safest place for neo-pagans to be because nobody will bother you for your religious or spiritual beliefs here if you're a neo-pagan. Those are the good things about being in Salem. Now, some of the not so good things about being in Salem and this is my experience. So if you came to this area and you were welcomed with open arms by a bunch of wonderful witches and were welcomed into a group and made really good friends, if that was your experience, I am really, really happy for you. I'm glad you had that wonderful experience. Good for you. But uh, that was not my experience. Honestly, the clickiness and cattiness that exists between the stores here rivals any amount of clickiness and cattiness that I saw in high school. The groups tend to be not welcoming to new people. When me and my husband moved here in 2014, we went to some open Sabbaths that some covens had and nobody really talked to us, nobody wanted to interact with us. I don't understand why you would have an open Sabbath and invite members of the public if when they come, you're just gonna kind of treat them like you're not part of the group and we don't really want to talk to you. I don't understand if you are gonna treat new people like that, why even keep it open? If you wanna have a ritual or a Sabbath or a spell that's only for your coven members, then don't leave it open to the public. It was very bizarre. I don't understand why you would even list on your website, yes, everyone welcome, come in, and then you get there and they're all just like, and they don't wanna to talk to you. It was very, very bizarre. Me and my husband practice independently, so we are not interested in joining a coven, but on the Sabbaths, it's nice to have a group of people to celebrate with. They're meant to be gatherings of people. So we did find a coven 30 minutes outside of Salem that was nice and friendly and warm and welcoming. And they invited new members of the community and you could go and people actually spoke to you and talked to you. But again, this was 30 minutes outside of Salem. Some of the store owners in Salem, I mean, wow i've gone in to buy stuff and i've overheard conversations or they've said this directly to me if i started a conversation with one of them they'll talk about another store owner in salem and they'll say things like i'm so glad her store closed and she went out of business because i hated her um or they'll say things like i can't stand that that bitch across the street because and then blah 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 whatever the cattiness is whatever the issue was but yeah there was a lot of nasty, nastiness, competitive feelings um, towards shop owner to shop owner. Not all of them, I'm not saying everyone, a lot of them have been very nice to me and have not said anything negative about anybody else. A lot of them are very nice, but some of them are not. Some of them are just catty, very, very catty. When Pagan Scrapbook Supply opened, I was kind of excited to maybe possibly sell some of my Pagan Scrapbook Supply items through some of the local stores, but everyone got so nasty with me when they found out. I had an online store and I handmade my own items. When they saw the pictures, they got like, there wasn't a sense of, oh, I could bring these in and you know, I could help you make money and we could help each other make money. It was just like, oh, you make your own stuff. And they were, they were jealous and threatened by it because most of the stuff in their store came from the Ezra Green catalog. So yeah, it was very unwelcoming. It was very rude. It was very nasty. And um, I did not pursue that any further. 
So yeah, the competitiveness between the groups is kind of crazy, especially the shop owners. It's very, very competitive. If you're really a witch and you really believe that you have the power to manifest whatever you want in your own life, you do not need to be jealous or competitive or threatened by anybody. It's the competitiveness and the cattiness that really shows a total lack of faith in their own abilities and they're probably not that good at practicing witchcraft. I have some neo-pagan friends and they, like me and my husband, go into Salem if we need a mojo bag, some herbs, some crystals, some things we don't buy there because we know they're way overpriced, like glass bottles you can get at the craft store for a dollar, they sell them for ten dollars, a lot of things are overpriced. It's a place to go in and grab some sub magical tools, not all, but some, and it's a place to go and hang out. They've got great restaurants down there, a place to hang out, have fun, go shopping. There's some great boutiques and, and, and clothing stores. Um, is it a place to go to gather for pagan community or make friends with other pagans? Not really. All right, in my next video about the lack of pagan community, I'm going to talk about the public's perception of witchcraft and why it does not matter to most neo-pagans how we are perceived by the general population and why it should matter to you. All right, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Blessed be.